CTD compliance, compliance highlights, and Sealy status update. This is John Brown of Sealy. I'll be joined today by Owen Smith, Sealy's resident expert on the FDA and compliance. Today's webinar is being recorded and will be available shortly for viewing from our website at sealingsealing.com. When the recording is available, we will send an email to all registrants with instructions on how to access the recorded webinar. Feel free to forward those instructions to others that may be interested but unable to attend today's session. In order to avoid feedback and background audio interference, we have muted all participants' audio connections. If you are experiencing a problem, please use the GoToWebinar window that is on your screen and use the chat function Add in your question or comment to the type message here window and sending the note to the organizer only. Today's webinar will cover the following areas. First, a brief overview of Sealy and our capabilities. Then we'll cover a few definitions and acronyms that are used in the presentation. Next, we'll cover the current DMF process and its drawbacks, and then the new ECTD process and its benefits. Finally, we'll bring you up to speed on CELIC's plans to comply and our current status in meeting the May 5th deadline. Our presentation will end with a question and answer session. All questions submitted will be answered either during the webinar or in a direct response to the attendee in the event we are unable to answer all questions. Throughout this webinar, please keep in mind that the scope of this webinar is for the U.S. FDA and will concentrate on DMF Level 3 files as they are, they are the only ones that CLEAK prepares. CLEAK services not only the pharmaceutical and over-the-counter industry, but also all industries that use rigid plastics or glass containers, such as food and beverage, cosmetics, and the chemicals industry. Celix quality system, manufacturing processes, and facilities are accredited by global standards such as ISO's 9001-2008 Quality Management System Program and GMP certifications using BRC and the Global Food Safety Initiative and, of course, the FDA. Each of our four facilities has an FDA registration number. Our four facilities in four separate countries and two continents, along with our strong reputation for quality and service, position Sealig as the global leader in induction sealing. We service the world directly or through our extensive broker network. These are just some of the brands in the healthcare industry that trust Sealig to seal their products and protect their brand names. Not only do induction liners provide hermetic seals and provide consumer confidence and tamper evidence, but they also promote shelf life for oxygen and moisture sensitive products, maintain active ingredients and can provide anti-counterfeit features and brand promotion through our printing capabilities. At this point, I'd like to hand the presentation over to Owen Smith, Sealage Director of Regulatory Affairs. Thank you, John. Hopefully everyone can see my screen now. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Before I get started, I would also like to uh, thank uh, Matt and Lori for, with our Sealink uh, Naperville team uh, for their help on the preparation of this presentation. As John stated earlier, the primary purpose of this presentation is to inform interested parties of Sealink's plans for the continuing compliance with our drug master file programs. Let us begin by first reviewing some important acronyms. 
we'll be using a set of common acronyms throughout this presentation. These are presented here on this slide. I'd like to uh, point out the last four uh, with special note, those being Electronic Common Technical Document, ECTD, which is the global, new global standard we'll speak about. Secondly, Electronic Submission Gateway, ESG, which is a portal uh, for submissions uh, uh, concerning ECTD. Also, you'll hear ICH, which is the International Council on the Harmonization of Technical Requirements for the Registration of Pharmaceuticals for Human Use for Europe, USA, and Japan, which is headquartered in Switzerland. And last uh, on this list of acronyms, you will uh, hear the phrase digital certificate, which is allows the encryption of sender for verification of electronic documents, principally the ECTDs. Next, DNF, the current process. All right. When CELIC speaks of submissions, it's referring to the FDA Health and Canada Drug Master Files. All CELIC FDA Drug Master Files are Type 3 packaging. In Canada, CELIC DMFs are technically Type 2 packaging. For the sake of brevity, the remainder of this presentation will address CELIC's plans for ECD compliance with its U.S. Drug Master File Type 3 packaging. A drug master file is a submission to the FDA that may be used to provide confidential detailed information about facilities, processes, or articles used in the manufacture, processing, packaging, and storing of one or more human drugs. A drug master file will only be reviewed by the FDA when it is referenced in an application or other drug master file, generally by letter of authorization from the FDA holder. On the left side, you'll see the current process that is pre-May 5th, 2017, approximation of what it would be involved to get a type 3 drug master file for packaging. There's multiple steps, um, many redundant pieces of paper, exchange uh, uh, copies, uh, several files are initiated, and the system typically would allow take about two plus more weeks to get established. This doesn't uh, include the FDA time uh, involved. Uh, the LOA submission, which is on the right-hand side of the screen, uh, speaks of the process once CELIC receives from an applicant or, a, uh, in our case, a closure manufacturer, which uh, would be requesting uh, a letter of authorization on behalf of a drug applicant the process involved for CLE to issue the letter of authorization, which goes through multiple copies, paper hard copies, uh, to the FDA, to the applicant, uh, to our direct customers, uh, back to the uh, FDA, either CEDAR or CEDAR in uh, Washington, D.C. Or, or Columbia. And there it, uh, CLE, actually is no longer involved in the process. From there, it goes back to the FDA and to the, directly to the drug applicant. In this slide, um, we list some of the common disadvantages associated with hard copy files. Of these, of particular note, is the volume of data. It's very difficult to manage uh, Files, for example, one of our DMS has over 515 products in it. The other disadvantage is multiple requests. Uh, these are not uh, easily reusable, often uh, very redundant requests, uh, resulting in much more time both by the FDA and also by the applicant as well as CELIC to make sure that the proper uh, paperwork and letter of authorizations are issued in, in the proper parties are copied. Updates are difficult to track. The revision numbers in the current system is really left to uh, the DMF holder 
how we want to track, and this can be varied and often uh, is, is not the same type of system used from one packaging company to the other. And I'm sure that's true uh, in other industries. Finally, the paper system, hard copy system, simply is not an echo friendly system given the technology that's available to do this type of work electronically. Uncommon communications, redundant hard copies, difficulties in sharing information and keeping it up to date. These are a few issues often encountered by Sealy with the current hard copy process. The solution was developed was the uh, ECD or Electronic Common Technical Document System. This is a proven solution in other countries and as a concept, the FDA and the ICH have been working toward this solution for several years. The FDA has mandated a May 5th, 2017 ECT compliance deadline for all submission, and this of course includes DMS and all LOAs. The modernization process. In my opinion, the major benefits of a digital DMF is the facilitation of communication between stakeholders and the timeliness and accuracy of the file, all in a common format. I'd like to point out on this slide uh, four points that I think are very beneficial to the digital DMS system. Uh, that includes immediate DMF access by parties uh, of concern, as well as some content is reused and is facilitated in future submissions. DF lifecycle management is more visual, chronologic, and automated in the system. The system complies with the international standard, Europe, Japan, US, and with many non-ICH regions such as Canada. It is not a new system. Summary of the Helix strategy, which begins with the selection of a third party provider, uh, starts by engaging what we're looking for in the supplier, and then that this supplier client will allow Helix to have, be fully compliant with its DMF and LOA submissions to both the FDA and Health Canada. Future interactions between industry and various governments globally will likely utilize this process, which is another benefit, as CELIC does uh, work with uh, drug companies and dossiers in Europe, as well as Japan and other parts of the world. The next part is the submissions, and the submission compliant has this, the ECD has specific formats and templates. So we're looking for a provider that can help with the formats and templates, as well as there are a few different versions allowed, such as PDF, XML. Celix Solution is looking for the XML backbone system. Next, digital certificates and e-signatures are required, and those have to be set up through the prov a provider uh, by Celix, and they must be compliant uh, both uh, and validated uh, both under 21 CFR Part 11, as well as validated uh, independently. Next, you have to set up an electronic submission gateway. This is the platform for all submissions going forward. Uh, if you would have questions regarding electronic submission gateway, the best source would be to contact this uh, email address uh, listed on this, this slide, which is ESG Help Desk at FDAHHS.gov. And finally, the ESG or electronic submission gateway must be tested and approved by the FDA for any further submissions and be accepted by the FDA. On this slide, we have a general depiction of the ECD module organization. The bulk of CLEAT submissions will reside in module three, which is generally specific to products 
and product formulations and quality. Here we have the ECD modules from a CELIC Type 3 packaging DMF perspective. While the module organization is the same for the various DMF types, that is 2 through 5, the new process allows for the difference in file content. And this, in my opinion, is the beauty of the process. That is its flexibility. The LOA submission process pre and post May 5th. CELIC anticipates a much more efficient LOA submission and approval process. If you would look at this slide on the, uh, the left, you'll see the pre-May system, which is again the current system that we uh, showed to you earlier. It's a much more cumbersome system, much more involved in the paperwork, a lot more clerical work. Uh, files are not readily uh, accessible, tracking is more difficult. On the right side is the new ECTD system that will be effective after May 5th. You can see the timing on that. We anticipate much quicker turnarounds, much more direct access by all parties of concern. In this case, we will be using the ESG, which is, again, the portal system for submissions. CMLIX plans to comply. CELIC ECT project status as of today, uh, we have selection of a solution third party provider, which we based on the ease of use of the software, as well as that the software be cloud based, be cost effective, and that it will deliver and on time, and that it will meet international submission experience. We have completed that as of March the 20th. CELIC intends to convert all this ECD formats uh, fully by May the 5th. ECD accounts and the digital certificates will be established mid-April. Validations of the submissions via ESG and FDA approval for DNS submissions will also occur mid-April. All CELIC, again, all CELIC DMS, which is included in our case, both Canada and FDA, but speaking here, the packaging DMS of CELIC for the US FDA, with the US FDA, will be converted to the ECD format and will be fully compliant by 5th of May. In conclusion, CELIC is committed to the full compliance with the US FDA's mandate and the new ECDSD submission process. I hope this presentation has been informative and you have a better understanding of the ECTV submission process in relation to CELIX Type 3 Drug Master File DMS. This slide contains uh, some uh, very good uh, references. Should you have any questions on some of the content in this presentation? I now would like to return the presentation to John uh, for a question and answer period. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks, Owen. At this point, we have reached the end of our webinar presentation, and what would like to invite the audience to send their questions to us for consideration. Again, please use the chat function on your GoToWebinar window and submit your question in the type message here window. We will not identify the person or company asking the question. We'll only identify, if we can, uh, the part of the industry that they are from. Um, as we have been presenting, we've actually received a couple of questions um, from the audience. Um, so let me go in. Uh, Owen, the first question looks like it comes from a closure manufacturer, uh, and the question reads, 
who has Sealy used as their solution suppliers for the ECTD mandate, and are you satisfied with them? Uh, Owen, any um, suggestions or recommendations here? Um, yes, we uh, with our provider, we've had them again on board since uh, March, and uh, been working with them. Uh, very, very happy with the provider that we selected. Um, we did uh, research and uh, reviewed several providers of software. Um, again, our research centered on a provider whose solution was easy to use, cost effective. Uh, we were looking for a cloud-based system, uh, a system that was capable of meeting the May, uh, fifth of May deadline uh, for our DMF conversions and for uh, all LOAs and uh, amendments going forward uh, post May 5th. And, uh, we are also looking for a provider that had global experience. Um, I, I would like to say further that I, I would rather not go on record on endorsing any provider one over another, but uh, it should someone uh, uh, want to, uh, after the webinar, contact me, I'd be happy to uh, I'd give you a list of uh, people that you, you can certainly try that are irreparable and, and uh, uh, interview uh, on your own concerns as each industry is, is different. Okay, thank you, Owen. Um, we have another question. It uh, looks like it's come in from a pharmaceutical company. The question reads, I'm a pharmaceutical manufacturer and will likely be requesting authorization to a, uh, I'm assuming it's a CELIG DMF, uh, before the May 5th date. Do we need to request in the current paper format or, or can we start off in uh, the electronic format uh, before May 5th. So, Owen, if you can shed any light on what happens before uh, May 5th. Yeah, certainly, John. Um, that's kind of a difficult question. Obviously, I think uh, looking forward in my crystal ball to uh, 5th of May, there's going to be an overlap period where uh, where some things are, uh, you know, this is not going to fall quite exactly in place in terms of submissions and authorization. That being said, CELIC is going to do everything to be sure that uh, requests or letters of authorization are not held up on our part. Uh, we're, we're willing to work on, with all stakeholders to be sure that uh, that gets done. Uh, but we intend to be fully compliant with the 5th of May. So all of our submissions post 5th of May will be in the ECTD format. Okay, thanks, Owen. Uh, a third question has been raised. I'm not sure um, what the, uh, the party is, uh, what part of the industry, but the question reads, how will CELIG's ECTD submissions be validated for FDA DMF submission approval? Hey, John, I think, uh, I think the question is uh, talking about the, the, the last step in the approval process through your uh, uh, ESG. And uh, for submissions going forward with your <clears throat> DMF or your drug submissions, um, in, in the case of CLA, like our third-party provider actually utilizes a recognized e-validation software, uh, which will provide independent validation of our submission process. In, in other words, that system will be verified and, and e-validated through an, a third-party software company that's recognized in the industry for providing that service. Okay, thanks. Uh, another question, um, kind of a clarification question. Um, what did you mean when you stated module one uh, did not have to be an ECTD format? Yeah, in general, the, the module one is actually a, um, a placeholder, if you will. It's information about the company and that can be in, that doesn't have to be in the se sequencing number or the uh, 3.2 type module uh, formats. Uh, it, it's pretty much can be in, in any type of summary that, and it's re regionally based. So each region will have a different one. In, in terms of the US FDA, it's pretty laid out. But uh, in other companies, or countries, I'm sorry, that use ECTD, that is, contains regional information such as facilities, manufacturing location, agents, and that type of information. And that can be 
uh, in a general format uh, it, it ha will have to be in an XML or a PDF type format when submitted, but uh, it doesn't follow any of the sequencing type or what they call level or subtext type uh, uh, instructions. I hope that answers the question. Okay, thanks, Owen. Uh, we have one more question, which I think I can answer, um, but I'll also invite, um, again, on the line, if you have questions, submit them uh, in the chat function. Uh, any questions that happen to come in after uh, we conclude the webinar um, uh, will be answered. The, uh, the last question is, will this presentation be made available for reference? Uh, the links on the last slide which I believe are the, uh, the reference links, uh, would be very helpful. Um, and yes, uh, this will be uh, available for, rep for online. Um, the uh, presentation uh, right now is being recorded. It'll again be available on our website, um, and we'll be sending out instructions on how to access those. One last question has come in. Uh, looks like Owen it reads, module one information on the company is provided. Yes. How are, uh, sig how do signatures appear? Is that clear to you, Owen? Again, module one. Yeah, uh, I think in module one they're asking about how are the, uh, when you attest that the, uh, uh, typically we'll attest that the, um, that the information contained in drug master file, you might do this uh, as an annual requirement or as an amendment, uh, how you attest uh, that the information is accurate uh, in module one and throughout the, the, actually you do it for the entire DMF. Uh, and the way we'll do that is there is a process, uh, if uh, you recall from the slide that talked about uh, certificates and electronic signatures, we will have authorized parties within CLEAP whose electronic signature will be uh, on file with our ECD submissions and with the FDA. Uh, and those are people who will uh, be authorized to uh, amend, uh, manage the FDAs, including the Module 1 uh, submissions and updates. I hope that, I hope I understood that question and I answered that. And we'll certainly invite, um, you know, if that question wasn't answered properly, um, Please, uh, please reply back to us and let us know. Um, at this time, um, we have to reach the end of our 30-minute uh, schedule. Um, we do have a, a couple questions that um, looks like they've been submitted, but we'll be answering those separately. Uh, and all questions uh, not answered will be answered over the next couple of days. Uh, as noted before, we will email a link to this webinar recording to all registrants uh, one sheet is available on our website. Thank you for attending. Uh, we hope you have found this webinar useful. If you have ideas for future webinars, please send those ideas to us via sales, uh, our uh, email address, sales at sealing.com, our website, contact us page at sealing.com or via your CELIG account representative. Again, thank you for attending. This webinar will now end.